youtube channel once again in this video i'm going to be showing you how i made this chocolate ganache which i used to cover this cake this recipe is ideal for ganache for covering cakes for desserts for piping for pouring onto your desserts etc you will need a pot butter milk and chocolate for this I'll post the quantities in the description box below for the recipe. So this recipe does not require you to use heavy cream. All you need is your margarine and milk. Basically heavy cream is milk that has got a high fat content. So this is a good substitute for heavy cream. So I'm going to put my milk and margarine which i've already measured into the pot and then uh, bring it to boil on the stove so i'm going to just fast forward because this will take a bit of some time to bring it to boil make sure that you stay as you heat your mixture so that it doesn't burn at the bottom as you can see it's almost boiling once it is boiled, we take it off the stove because you don't want it to start burning at the bottom. The next thing you are going to do is to add your, your chocolate into the mixture. So don't let the, the mixture of margarine and milk sit for too long before you add your chocolate because that heat is the one that's supposed to melt your chocolate. Just using a, a metal whisk, you can press down your, your chocolate and then you start mixing it as it softens up. At first, it will look like it is separated, but continue to mix until it becomes well mixed and it starts looking silky. Continue to mix until all the chocolate has dissolved. As you can see the chocolate is now looking silky we set it aside and let it cool so that it can start firming up as it cools down i'm going to start working on my cakes i'll be sure to keep mixing my ganache as i work on the cake so that it sets evenly and doesn't form lumps this is leftover ganache from last time that I had in the refrigerator. You can store your leftover ganache in the fridge. So to use that, I'm going to put it in the microwave on a 10 second setting. Take it out to check if it has melted. Then I'm going to put it back again on a 15 second setting. So I'm trying to cut down the time here so that i don't melt it too much i want it to be thick so that i can be able to pipe a border on my cake so that i can put filling in between my cakes so i'm mixing my ganache using a metal tablespoon it's still quite hot but because i want to use it for piping i will work the ganache until it's soft and all the lumps are gone Remember to keep stirring your ganache that is cooling on the side. I'm happy with how the ganache that I'm working on is now lump free and as you can see it's thick and suitable for piping. So basically when you're using ganache, you can use it for pouring onto your desserts. If you're going to use it for pouring, then it has to be uh, a pouring consistency. In this case, I want to pipe a border on the cakes. So I had to make sure that it's thick enough for piping right around the cake. So you make sure that you cool your ganache for long enough so that you can be able to pipe it on your cake. You can use this recipe to pour onto your desserts onto your things like donuts but just make sure that you don't let it cool for too long so that you can be able to pour it onto your desserts and cakes so i'm adding filling in the border 
so that uh, it doesn't squish out onto the outside of the cake as I decorate the the cake so I'm just being messy because when I put the top layer uh, the top layer is going to put some weight on my filling and everything is just going to level up nicely so it really doesn't matter if I spread this evenly or what because the top layer will do the job for me so when you stack your layers make sure that you clean your board so that you don't have any crumbs on the board the next thing I'm going to do is to check on the ganache and see if it is set well enough for spreading as you can see it's still runny so to speed up the process I'm going to chuck this into the refrigerator for 10 minutes or so depending on how cold your refrigerator is and also depending on your climate sometimes ganache takes longer to chill in winter in summer than it does in winter as you can see this ganache has been in the fridge and it's starting to firm up the cakes that I'm decorating today were in the refrigerator so they are already cold so I think that this consistency is going to work for these cakes because as soon as I apply it on the cake it's going to continue um, it's going to continue setting since the cakes are quite cold I am using a straight palette knife to apply the ganache onto the cakes you can use an offset spatula for this make sure that you apply it nice and even filling in any gaps that you need to fill the next thing I'm going to do is to use a scraper to scrape off and level the cake a metal scraper is a must-have tool when you especially when you're going to be working with ganache and buttercream this is uh, the scraper that you want to use for your ganache if you are going to be decorating a fondant cake you can go ahead and decorate after the first coat but for this cake i want to ice it using ganache only so i need to apply a second layer so that i can seal off any crumbs that are still showing so i'm adding the second layer of my chocolate as you can see it continued to set while i was applying the while i was applying the first layer then i'm going to scrape off again to level it up using my metal scraper this recipe is my go-to recipe for all items that require ganache i can use it for chocolate drip all, all i need to to do is to vary the thickness of the ganache i do this by uh, chucking it into the microwave oven until i get the desired consistency if you don't have a microwave oven you can go ahead and use a water bath to warm up your ganache to the desired consistency a water bath is basically putting water onto the stove in a large container and then you put your chocolate in a bowl like in my case then you put that bowl inside the the boiling water that is on the stove so you don't heat up chocolate or ganache directly on the hot plate because that's just going to burn up your chocolate so I'm scraping off the top, making sure that it's nice and level. You can go ahead and continue scraping to smooth in. And if you need to fill up any gaps, you can go ahead and do that until you are happy with the finish that you are obtaining. Make sure that each and every time that you scrape, you clean your scraper afterwards. I'm happy with how the cake is looking thank you guys for watching this tutorial this is the recipe that i use for my drip for crumb coating uh, my fondant cakes 
and any other issues that might require ganache thank you for watching my youtube tutorial please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed subscription is free it just means that you are joining the community that watches my video tutorials until next time